yogis. So today we're going to be working on some really nice quad stretches. So we're going to be working with some postures that really help to release the quadricep muscles. And oftentimes you'll find in your body, it's not just one muscle group. If you're a person that has a specific type of activity on a regular basis, you can come into a repetition of motions and that can put strain or misalignment in other parts of the body. So as we come into this practice today, about a 20 to 30 minute focus on the quadriceps, but we're also going to be paying attention to other parts of the body, including the hip flexors, the psoas, and basically the area below the belt, so the lower portion of the body to kind of release some of those muscles, moving the hamstrings. And as you realize with just about everything in life, everything is interconnected. So even if you have maybe you have constant low back pain. It doesn't necessarily mean it's located in the lumbar spine or the lower back. It could also mean hip flexors. It can also mean all the way down the legs. It can also be something in the feet or in the knees. So, I mean, everything resonates with everything. So, we're going to work on today just loosening up the quadriceps and working on the specific emphasis on the lower body. So, things that you might need for your practice today. I have about three blocks here. If you have blocks, blocks are fantastic. If you don't have blocks, books, um, support even to build elevation. So just finding things in your home that you can work instead of blocks if you don't have those. Also, if you have any sensitivity in your body, blankets are fantastic. They add elevation to the body. They also add a little bit of softness and comfort if you have a hard surface. And the last thing we're gonna need is a belt. And things that could be used instead of a belt would be a regular belt that you would use to hold up your pants, even the belt off of a bathrobe. So you have to be kind of creative um, when you're working with things around your house if you don't have all the tools you need. So to start today's practice, go ahead and have some elevation handy. And we're actually just going to start right on the heels. Now, if you're a person that has any sensitivity in your ankles or it just doesn't work for your knees to sit, you can also come into a kneeling position and you can place them height underneath the body. So even taking blocks and stacking them up to bring your body up just a bit, this helps to take some of that direct pressure off that area of the body. So I want you to go ahead and elevate as much as you can. And now if this is a posture that doesn't work for you, then you can certainly omit it and come into any seated posture. So taking a moment here, it's gonna allow the shoulders to roll back and down. We're gonna root the tailbone into the earth, allowing the tailbone to release. We're gonna let the shoulder blades roll back and down. And just take a moment here to get acclimated to this posture. And we'll just take a few rounds of breath here, just allowing the breath to slow and deepen. So first we come into awareness breath where you just observe how our breath is moving in our body. And as you take a pause or two, observing your natural state of breath, we're going to begin to direct the breath, move a little deeper into the base of the lungs. Let it drop down a little deeper. And as you breathe and inhale, you expand the lungs from side to side, front to back, and top to bottom. So really letting that full, deep, breath happen. And then as you continue to inhale, draw the breath upward in the spine, maybe reaching the base of the heart, pausing here for a bit of breath retention, and audibly or silently release the breath, let it go. We're going to move through about three or four more rounds of this type of breathing, just letting the breath drop a little deeper, a little deeper, a little deeper. So moving us into that awareness in our breathing. And then when you've reached your fifth breath, go ahead and bring palm to palm compression to heart space. Bow the chin to the heart as you honor not only yourself, but this time you allotted for yourself just to maintain focus on your body, to come into your practice. If you'd like to sit in intention, you can go ahead and create an intention for your practice at this time. Take one more breath at heart space, drawing the power and the positivity of your intention. And as you release the breath, share that positivity with the world. Take one more breath here. And as you release the breath, draw the hands up through the midline. And as you exhale, release the hands behind the body. Grab onto opposite elbows. Let the shoulder blades roll back and down. Go ahead and switch. And release, inhale the arms up overhead. As you exhale, release the heart space. Go ahead and grab onto opposite elbows at this point, and then begin to inhale the arms up overhead. Just imagine you're taking off a t-shirt. Try to have contact with your elbows, 
and allow the shoulder blades to roll back and down. And release. We'll go ahead and grab onto opposite elbows. Inhale, draw the arms up overhead and relax those shoulder blades back and down. Inhale, brings us back to center and we mindfully begin to release, placing the hands on the knees and we'll move through a few rounds of cat and cow. As you inhale, throw the chest through the gaze of the shoulders, begin to bring your gaze up. And as you exhale, hollow up the belly and round the spine. Inhale, draws the chest through the gaze of the shoulders, gaze moves up. And as you exhale, hollow up the belly and round through the spine. Go ahead and move through a few more rounds, moving with your energy, your body. Letting the head and neck move with the spine, so really creating that beautiful movement. Go ahead and move through two more rounds. And last one, here we come right back into neutral spine. We'll go ahead and begin to come off the heels. And if you need that break, go ahead and step a leg back. Press out through the ball, the heel, the ball and the heel. And go ahead and drop that right hip down to square your hips to the front of the mat. And take a pause here, just releasing that really nice stretch on the hamstrings. Releasing that position we are in, in the quadriceps. And then from here, if it feels pretty good, you begin to rock forward and backward on the ball of the foot, taking that stretch a little deeper into the hamstring muscles. So again, just take your time with this. Let your body un unbind from that different posture. And then go ahead and bring it right back to center. We'll step back to the left leg, pressing the ball of the foot into the mat, directing your heel away from the body, and then allowing that left hip to drop slightly to square your hips to the front of your mat. Just stay here for a moment or two. So we don't want to overstretch. We want to give ourselves some time to get into this. And then again, you can create a little bit of movement as you roll forward and backward on the ball of the foot. Now, if this is just not your thing, then you can certainly stay with that nice deep stretch. And then go ahead and bring it right back to center. We're going to step forward with the right foot. We're going to place the blocks if you have them. And you may or may not need them in your practice. So again, using what you have for your body. Shoulder blades roll back and down. Knee to ankle line, the knees tracking the second and third toe. Tailbone releases down as the crown moves away from the tailbone. And then from here, we're going to tuck that back toe, draw the heel away from the body, and then begin to bring that knee up. We're going to come into a little bit of fluid movement here, strengthening through the right hip. Exhale, release down, inhale, draws up, high lunge, and release. So just touching down each time. We go to about a count of 10, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Pause here. Release your hands to the blocks and draw out even more through that back heel. Nice long line from the crown all the way to the heel of the foot. And breathe. Root down with the left hand as you exhale, twist to the right. Exhale, release this down, root down with the right hand and twist to the left. Exhale, release it down. Go ahead and lower back down onto that knee and we'll go ahead and step it back into a runner stretch. Ground the toes toward the body and away. And then if you want to add just a little bit more, you can go ahead and release the heel, the hip toward the heel and come into just a little bit more opening. Continue to walk yourself forward. Come just into that right amount of depth that you need for this pose. Last three, last two, and last breath. We walk it right back to center and then come back into that first position. Go ahead and moving into some flexion by drawing the toes toward the body and the away. And release. We'll go ahead and begin to step that front foot back and we come into table position. So coming back into that neutral space in our bodies. And then this time we'll step forward with the left foot, going through the same motions we did on the other side. So starting in low lunge, shoulders rolling back and down, tailbone releases, crowd moves away from the tailbone. And breathe. We're going to tuck that back toe, press out through the back heel, 
we go ahead and move through about 10 rounds of that same strengthening of the left side of the body. So when you're ready, begin to press the back foot into the mat, raise yourself up, become into high lunge. Exhale, releases down. Inhale and exhale. Again, moving to about a count of 10. Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. We lower all the way down. Pausing here, walking the blocks back toward the body, coming into a little bit of flexion. And then coming all the way back to sitting on the heel. See if that works for you in your practice. So taking that depth in your practice as much as you need to. And then again, finding that just right space for your body. Last three. Last two. And last breath. We go ahead and bring it right back to center. Can we bring it into low lunge? And just so that we're even on both sides, we'll tuck the back toe, raise that back knee up, press out to the heel, coming into high lunge and really feeling that nice deep stretch. Begin to root down with the right hand and as you exhale, twist to the left. Inhale brings us back to center, rooting down with the left hand and as you exhale, twist into the right. Inhale brings us back to center. Go ahead and drop that back knee. And go ahead and step back. We'll come into our first child's pose. Big toes come together, knees can be wide apart, close together, some in the middle. And just take a moment here, really extend the arms away from the tailbone. So creating some space underneath the armpit, allowing the hips to release toward the heels. And we've got about three to five rounds of breath here. You can release your chin or your forehead to the mat. And then give yourself some time to just melt into this pose. So as we come into our yoga practice, we have an a space we want to move in towards our minds, but we really want to just breathe into it. Let the mind just be silent. Let the body breathe and just flow into your practice with your breath. Last three, last two, and last breath. We bring it right back to center. We're going to move into another nice space in the body. We'll be using some height, some blocks for elevation, but again, using what you have in your own home studio. And we're going to be working on a deep stretch variation of Krishasana or Heron Pose. So to start this practice, I'm going to show without a block, and then I'll show with a block. So I want you to come into that space that feels just right for you. So starting first in a modification, we'll start with a block, and just go ahead and bring your block alongside your body like so. Go ahead and have a seat. And then we'll just come into seat, sitting on the block, and the knees are bent. Have another block in front of your mat. And then we're just going to begin to grab lightly on the left ankle, and then draw it toward your body. And then just allow it to rest vertically alongside your body. And breathe. So taking the knee and then drawing the line all the way up to that left hip. And then if the knee wants to fall in or out, see if you can kind of try to help it find that nice midway point. Now again, if you are working through injuries and this just doesn't work for you, then again, follow along as best as you can, being safe for your body is most important. And then from here, we're just gonna go ahead and begin to extend that right leg out. So we're gonna start here and just breathe. So we're gonna place a block, the lower setting right underneath the knee. So we're not hyperflexing through the back of that knee and breathe. The shoulders are rolling back and down, and we're rooting into our support. Now, once you're here for a while, if you're feeling like I could definitely go deeper, then for those of you that feels like this is a pretty good stretch, go ahead and stay there. And then I'll go ahead and remove the block and cue for those who want to move a little bit deeper. So we're going to just come into seated again. For those of you that are holding, breathe. And then go ahead and take your right ankle and then guide it alongside your body vertically. And then we'll begin to extend that right leg out. So we'll start by placing it on a block. And then not pressing through the back of the knee. And in order to protect that, press evenly between the ball and heel to activate that. So that creates a slight bend to the knee. And that's better than pressing out through the back of the knee. So we want to make sure that we're staying safe in our practice. Also have your strap. Handy. You might be going there in just a moment. Here we go. And breathe. Shoulders are rolling back and down. 
And then for those of you that are in a modification, we're gonna go ahead and begin to bring a little bit more elevation into the block. So setting it to the next level and breathe. Pressing out between the ball and the heel. And breathe. And then you can even take your strap and arch the foot and let your hand slide down the strap. Now what this does, a couple of things. So keep a slight bend in that right knee and press evenly between the ball and the heel. And then as you draw the strap toward the body, it does a couple of things I notice first and foremost. First, it allows my shoulders to roll back and down. It draws the chest to the gate of the shoulders. It roots my tailbone down a little bit more and I feel the lengthening of my spine. And breathe. And then we'll go ahead and mindfully bend that right knee, place the sole of the foot down. We're going to bring that block all the way up to the high setting. So again, for those of you following along at home, depending on where you are with your body, you can, can keep moving on with us, or you can stay in that space that feels good. So the most important thing as you move through your practice is to have a practice that's conducive for your body. Again, we place the strap in the arch of the foot, keep a slight bend in that right knee, we press evenly between the ball and the heel, and we continue to allow the shoulders to roll back and down. Now in the full pose, Krachasana, Heron pose, we're using this as a deep stretch variation, but as you come into the pose, you're going to continue to draw the leg closer toward the body. Now as this happens, it's not a rocking back of the spine. The spine stays right where it is. You're drawing the leg closer and closer and closer toward the body. So that's the option if you want to move even deeper today, would be coming into full form. But for this particular class, we're just going to use this as a deep stretch variation. So we'll go ahead and bend that right knee. And then from here, we'll just begin to draw the left knee up and both knees are bent. We're gonna switch sides now. So having your block now on the left side. And again, if you are modifying, please use your props as you need to. We're gonna grab a hold of the right ankle and draw that foot in toward the body vertically. So if you look down at the sole of your foot, it's right alongside your body. So you're not torquing the ankle. The ankle's nice and relaxed. And we have the left knee bent. And then we'll go ahead and extend long with the left leg. And again, I want you to keep a slight bend in the knee so you're not pressing out to the back of the knee. You're keeping that leg nice and active by pressing evenly between the ball and the heel. So keeping a slight bend in that left knee. And then we'll go ahead and place the strap in the arch of the foot and draw the strap toward the body. Shoulders are rolling back and down. So again, take a pause here and just observe as you draw the strap towards you, how it makes slight alterations with your body. So shoulders roll back and down and chest draws to the gate of the shoulders. Spine is lengthening from the crown, from the tailbone all the way up to the crown. And breathe. And then we're gonna go ahead and move on. So bending that left knee, setting the sole of the foot down. We'll set the block to the next setting and make sure it's enough that you can extend your leg out. And then beginning to rest your heel on that next level. Hands draw down the strap, shoulders roll back and down, chest draws through the gate of the shoulders. Slight bend to that left knee, so not hyperflexing through the back of the knee. So hyperflexing is when you're very, very flexible and if you put pressure on the knee to extend the leg out, it puts pressure on the back of the knee. So we don't want to pop that knee. We want to keep it nice and safe by keeping a slight activation. And breathe. And then I feel like I'm leading a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and move on. I'm going to bend that left knee. We're going to set the block all the way up to the highest setting. And we're going to bring that Heel the foot all the way to the block, still keeping a slight bend to that left knee. Hands slide down the strap. Shoulder blades roll back and down, chest draws through the gate of the shoulders, and breathe. So this is a very progressive stretch. We don't want to jump into this. Just give yourself some time to settle into the space. And then for those that want to move deeper, try to maintain the length of your spine and if you do lift the leg closer toward the body, you don't want to lean your body back to get the leg there. You're drawing the leg closer toward your body, and it's small, deep breathing to get there. So again, the focus of the class today was not to go into the full 
form. It was just to use this as a deep stretch variation for some of the different postures we'll be moving into later. And then mindfully go ahead and release the strap. We'll bend the left knee and we'll begin to bring the right leg out to join. And we'll go ahead and take a moment here. We're going to sit back on our mat. We're going to extend both legs out. And we're just going to begin to rotate through the ankles and create a little bit of movement in the legs. And release. We're going to go ahead and bend through the left knee, placing the sole of the foot on the inner line of the inner part of the leg. And we're going to pause here. We're going to press that sole of the foot lightly into the mat. We're going to allow the shoulders to roll back and down. We're going to take this into another nice posture. And breathe. And then we want you to begin to reach your left arm around the left knee. And then you can reach for a grasp of the hands. So I want you to keep drawing that knee closer toward the body. And breathe. Now, if you can't quite grasp your fingers or your wrists, you can go ahead and use your strap to do that. And as you come into this, I want you to first find that gripping and then try to lengthen it out as much as you're able. And then imagine the crown drawing toward the toes. So we're going to inhale and as you exhale, create a little bit of space. So mindful movement, drawing yourself forward. Inhale brings us right back to center and we release. We go ahead and stretch out through the legs, creating a little bit of movement. And then we'll bend the right knee, drawing it in toward the body. Pause here with your hands on your knee. And we'll begin to reach the right arm around the right knee. We'll swing the left arm around and either reach for the wrist or you can reach for the fingertips, wherever you are. We're going to find that gripping first and we're going to inhale to create a little bit of length in the spine. And then as you exhale, Release. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, release. So thinking of reaching the crown toward the toes, spine stays nice and long here. Keep drawing the knee closer toward the body. Inhale brings us right back to center and we release, extending out through the legs again. And just a little bit of massage here to release that. And we're going to go ahead and come back onto our mat in table position. I'm going to stretch a leg or two out. I'm going to take this into supportive side plank just to get a nice stretch along the side body. So we're going to begin to bring the left hand underneath the chin. And as you exhale, rotate the right side of your mat. Inhale the arm up overhead and extend it nice and long. Exhale, release. We come right back to the mat. Draw both knees together. Extend out with the left leg. Draw out through the heel. Center the right hand underneath the chin. And as you exhale, begin to bring your gaze to the left side of your mat and alongside your body. And release it right back down. We come right back to facing the mat. And we begin to draw both knees together. Now as we come into the next practice, we're going to be coming into Varasana. So full form. And then we'll begin to come into Supta Varasana, which is reclined variation. Now again, another, another deep stretch for the quads. Also puts a little bit of pressure on the knees and the low back. So we're bringing that awareness into this area. So if you know you have any pre-existing issues, then maybe watch and then mindfully come into this practice. So start by bringing the knees together. You're going to place your hands on the calves and roll the calves out to the side so that you can sit your sit bones in between the heels. Again, legs are vertically alongside the body and breathe. So as we come into this particular practice, you can certainly use a block. But if you come, begin to come into recline variation, you want to make sure that you remove your support. Starting here once again and breathing. We're going to begin to add a little bit to our upper body, just so our upper body has something to do. We begin to inhale the arms up overhead, and as you exhale, begin to wrap the right arm underneath the left, place the hands on the shoulders or bringing the palms together. Coming into eagle arms and breathe. So we're getting a nice dynamic stretch across the thoracic spine. And release, this time we'll wrap the left arm under the right, palms come together, and breathe. Inhale back to center and release the hands behind the body. Place the palms on the soles of the feet and allow the shoulders to roll back and down. So the fingertips walk up the back of the feet, shoulders are rolling back and down. Tailbone breathes. And breathe. Now, if this is your deep stretch today, then you can certainly stay here. If you feel like, and you've done this posture before, you want to add more, you can begin to walk your elbows back. 
observing each time. Now, if the knees begin to fly open or come up off your mat, that's probably where you are today. So part of this posture is maintaining the integrity of the pose by keeping the knees drawing down. Once you're there, if you feel like you have a little bit more, you can begin to walk yourself down a little bit more. And then maybe eventually coming all the way down to your mat. Now, another variation here is you could actually place supports behind the back of the body. And I'll show that in just a moment. But we're gonna hang out here for just a bit. For those of you that are watching from your home studio, if this is not where you are going today, maybe just observing and in time, setting that into your practice when you're ready to get into this space. Once you're here, you can bring your arms up overhead, standing nice and long with the side bodies, allowing yourself to settle into this. Got about five rounds of breath here. Last three, last two, and last breath. We'll go ahead and walk ourselves out the way we came in, starting with the elbows, and then walking our hands onto our soles, and then bringing yourself all the way into upright. To come out of this, we'll just begin to walk ourselves forward, and then we'll extend a leg or two out. And come back to center. Now, if you still have a little bit more to do, we're going to come into camel pose, Rikshasana, Ustrasana, camel pose. And we're just going to start here. We're going to find about hip distance apart between the knees. And we're going to place our hands on the back, the flat of our low back. And we're just going to begin to draw the hands down. So letting the tailbone release down. So just taking some time here. And when you come into back bends, especially camel, people think that they need to bend at the lumbar spine, but it's actually you're lifting the chest up to lengthen the spine. And it's more of a back bend coming into the upper body than it is the lower body. The lower body is staying exactly where it is. You're just raising and inhaling to lengthen through the spine. So keep pressing your hands on the low part of the back, drawing that tailbone down. So really drawing that energy down. Press your hands into the low back. And you want about a, a hip to knee alignment. So you're not leaning back again to come into this. You're staying right in that same nice long line. As you inhale, the chest begins to rise. So keep letting the chest draw away from the body. And then you'll know when you are at your limit shape. We're just gonna start here using this as a deep stretch variation. Tailbone keeps releasing down, shoulders are rolling back and down, keeping your gaze straight away. So not taking the head and neck into this just yet. And breathe. Keep drawing that tailbone down. And go ahead and inhale, bring it right back to center. And then let that tailbone just relax a little bit. So if you are feeling a tremendous amount of strain in the low back, then this is probably where you need to be in your practice today. But if you're feeling like it's beginning to open and you're wanting to move forward, then go ahead and do that. And also as you're kneeling, if you feel that there's any sensitivity in your knees, have that blanket out and then add a little support underneath the knees. So my mat is pretty supportive, so I'm feeling pretty good. But if you're feeling that in your knees, add some support. We're going to go ahead now and begin to bring the blocks on the outside edge of the knees. We're going to come down in this gradually, so coming into the Strasna camel pose. We're going to start again with the hands on the low back, drawing that tailbone down. So really getting that tailbone to draw down. Hands are placed on the back. Low back in the lumbar, just below the lumbar spine, so coming into the, the pelvis. And then begin to draw that chest forward. As you inhale, as if somebody's drawing the chest away from the body. So keep drawing that tailbone down. Very gradual, progressive. And then if you have no other strain in the head or neck, you can allow the head and neck to gently come into this practice. You begin to bring the hands to the blocks. And if you do bring the hands to the blocks, allow the shoulder blades to roll back and down. And then not leaning back into this. So keeping the integrity of the low body. And you can keep your gaze straight away. Keep letting the tailbone release, keep opening up through the heart. And then go ahead and bring it right back to center. Check in with your body. If you're feeling like you still want to add more, you can keep going with this. If you're feeling like you're done in your practice, then coming through a twist or two would be really good for loosening up that because we're coming into a forward backward motion of the body. Sagittal plane of motion, so 
to balance that coming into a transverse or twisting helps to release that. Even a side to side motion is good. All right, so if you're wanting to continue on with this again, letting that tailbone release down, heart space opens, chest draws forward and away. And then maybe you feel like you can set the blocks on a lower setting, or maybe you tuck the toes to help bring the earth to you. Shoulders rolling back and down, chest draws away from the body, tailbone releases down. crossing the underneath the right, right shoulder comes down, gaze moves to the left. Go ahead and move through a little bit of side to side motion, just releasing that position in the body. And moving through a couple more rounds, stretching a leg or two back. And then finally drawing the toes together, releasing the hips toward the heels into child's pose. Walking the hands away from the body, creating space underneath the armpit. And then walking the hands back toward the body. Go ahead and swing the legs out. And we're mindfully gonna get, begin to come down onto the back. Arms come out in front, palms face each other, and rolling down on the spine one vertebra time. Bring the arms up overhead, extend it nice and long. Fingers and toes, full body stretch. Creating space underneath the armpits, lengthening the side bodies, arms into the body. Create some side to side motion. This is a wonderful time to give some love to the lumbar spine. So giving a little bit of self massage here as you rock from side to side, front to back. Keep the right knee drawn into the body, extend long with the left leg and switch, and switch, and switch, and switch. And go ahead and speed it up just a bit. Three, two, and one. And go ahead and hug those knees in. Mind release the soles of the feet down to the mat and go ahead and extend one leg and then the other. Bring the arms up overhead and then just let your arms melt right down to your side. Shoulders gently tucking underneath the body, palms facing upward. Allow the feet to roll out to the side and allow the eyes to soften and close. As you come into this space, take a moment here and I want you to breathe into the lower body. Imagine the breath flowing from the tailbone and then beginning to draw your awareness upward from the tailbone up through the spine, coming out through the crown of the head and then letting every part of the body fill with breath. And as the breath begins to slow and deepen, allow yourself to move deeper and deeper and deeper, letting go. And then you have arrived at Shavasana. You can stay here for as long as you need to. And know you can always revisit this place. All you need to do is close your eyes and you'll be there. From my heart to yours, Yogis. Namaste.